What's going on YouTube? Well, I wanted to start off a new series. Um, we just wrapped up the BOA Profiles videos. It was a great hit. I did an individual video on all the BOAs in my collection, 16 of them. Uh, a lot of new subscribers based off that generated a lot of interest in the website as well as the BOA Morph Calculator. Make sure you check that out if that's something that's interesting to you. But um, being that there was so much kind of enthusiasm surrounding my BOAs lately, I wanted to come up with a new profile series. And the one that I thought about is going to be titled Boa Breeding Profiles. This is going to be the first episode in the series. I'm pretty much going to go through all of the planned breedings that I have. I'm going to bring out the males and the females together, uh, you know, put some screenshots up of my morph calculator, show the results of all the pairings and stuff like that. But before we just jumped into that, I wanted to kind of give you guys a background in some things that you want to uh, understand before you just you know, start thinking about breeding. Um, this episode is going to be focused on quality and how important quality is in the selection of your breeding stock. Um, if you look in the market now, there is a huge range of selection. Um, a lot of people have come into bow breeding over the last few months. I guess I'll take a little side note. This is Samson. Uh, if you guys don't know her, she's my normal Colombian female from 2006. Beautiful girl, um, about six feet. But uh, back to the uh, market. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of range in quality. For example, if you're looking for a hypo boa nowadays, you can get it from a million different places. And if it's only a pet boa that you're interested in, maybe your, your range of quality that you're uh, willing to accept is, is fairly large. However, if you are thinking about breeding boas, you should always strive for the best quality that you can get. I mean, there are bloodlines that are so-so, there are you know, hypos that are drab in color, and then there are some that are just on fire. You know, if you're thinking about producing animals, you should be going after the boas that are on fire. I mean, really, your odds of producing a high-quality animal from two mediocre species, or specimens are, are fairly small. But if you take, like, two picks of the litters and put them together, granted, you may get a couple, you know, so-so babies in there, but, you know, your odds of producing something stunning are going to be much higher. Um, and really that kind of leads me into my collection and, and how I've you know strived to put it all together um, when I first got into the market you know I, I wasn't aware of morph breeders I wasn't aware of all the different places online that you can look for boas um, I kind of just found a snake in a pet shop and said okay you know I'll do a little bit of research but this seems like a good one so I'll get it um, that turned out to be Samson who she's awesome and I'm really happy to have her but in the case of Slim you know, he's a really cool boa, but if I were in the market today for a coral albino, there are a lot of things that I would have done different uh, than if, you know, than, than what I did back in uh, 2007 when I picked him up. Um, so, you know, really what I want you guys to start recognizing is that in the market, yes, there's a lot of range in prices. We've seen a lot of drop in prices, but the, the really high quality animals are still moving at high prices. Um, you know, quality really should be the most important factor that you think about. You should be able to get from a reputable breeder. Uh, they should have detailed records on feeding, on sheds, on anything that's happened to the animal. The animal should be healthy, um, you know, full-bodied, active, um, ideally tame, um, but that doesn't really go into the quality aspect of things. That's more for the pet side of it. But, you know, really, you, you want to be able to go from someone that you trust. Um, you know, never, you know, you should never expect mites in a new boa. If a breeder sends you a boa with mites on it, I'd put the thing back in the bag and send it to them. Um, you know, there's just a lot of factors that will point to a good quality animal. And really, in my collection, that's what I've tried to do. I mean, I think George is probably the coolest looking super salmon jungle I've seen in my life. Uh, Wendy, just a beautiful sun glow. Jane, my jungle, fully striped, vivid color. You know, Jack, the jungle parahead, is just on fire with his pattern and color. Really, every boa in my collection, there, there are a few reasons that I, I decided to add them over, you know, any other boa. So, I just want you guys to keep that in mind uh, as we start progressing through the series. Um, you'll get to notice, you know, if, if you've watched the boa profile videos or if you're just going to watch the breeding videos, um, you'll notice that the quality is substantial in my collection, and that's something I'm really proud of. So, uh, if you guys want to check out the collection anymore, make sure, like I said, go uh, look at the boa profiles videos. Also, go to signaturesnakes.com. Uh, you can see my whole collection. There's a whole section on morphs and different stuff like that, but the website's still developing. Uh, but anyway, we'll keep this one short. Uh, quality, quality, quality. Just remember that the higher uh, the quality, the, the more expensive, but you know, the more uh, chance you have of actually producing something that folks are going to be interested in buying. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick little lesson. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on the YouTube Signature Snakes channel. Thanks a lot, guys.